Welcome back to another episode and so glad that you joined me today. Um, maybe sometime in the last year or so I wrote a column on the benefits of uh, Uber especially to those uh, older uh, seniors and I did some calculations and kind of came up with a really loose rule of thumb that if uh, an Uber ride to the store or to your doctors or to do some errand averaged between say 10 and 15 dollars a, a uh, uh, round trip um, that actually if it was say one a day at that you could pretty much uh, replace the cost of, of a car now, like I said, this is really loose. It would be different if it's in New York City or Rapid City, South Dakota, areas more rural, the costs are higher. But nevertheless, the, the point is that um, so many seniors um, moving about is freedom. Having your car is often freedom. And losing that freedom is kind of a big deal. So uh, Uber is, uh, is a way that gives somebody that chance of having uh, that freedom. Uh, recently I was talking with my wife and we thought for one of our um, relatives that's aging um, that maybe, for example, a Tesla that self-drives or does most of the driving could extend somebody's freedom in operating a car by several years. So there's more and more options for um, uh, our, our senior population. So, this, you know, it, it, can, it can make sense. So it can, can you imagine this where um, uh, you get a call from uh, your uh, parents, let's say, uh, elderly parents, they need a ride to the doctor. And you respond, well, you know, it's that's really hard. I'm working and it's uh, difficult today. I can't take off to take you to the appointment. But tell you what, I've arranged for an Uber to pick you up instead. Now, think of the benefits of this. Uh, first of all, the elderly parent needed transportation. And let's say in this case, they're probably living at home. Uh, maybe they can't drive, obviously. Um, the son or the, the daughter that's called, um, they have fulfilled the request for help. And um, it's really possible that the expense of the Uber is less than the cost of having to take off, losing the time, so to speak, on the clock at the employer, and um, it may, you know, the expense to them for, for gas and everything might exceed actually the Uber. Uber. So this is, just seems like a win-win for everybody, right? Well, <laughs> it may not be that easy. It all depends upon the emotional history and the money scripts of everybody involved. Because uh, you might be surprised to consider that this isn't necessarily a dollars and cents transaction. Uh, if everybody was dealing without the emotional history and baggage around this, then it 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 would be perfectly a win-win. But this could be set up to be a lose-lose for everybody. Now, the, some seniors might feel really uncomfortable, really unsafe getting into a car with somebody they don't know. In, in the age of COVID, uh, there's an additional risk of infection. Uh, you know, that same risk might be there with the family member, but nevertheless, this is a person that is unknown. There could just be yeah, general fear around that. I think even more than that, adding to that, 
there could be um, offense taken, um, a feeling of being minimized, that I am not important enough for my son or my daughter to come pick me up and help me. Uh, there could be a lot of um, um, old baggage around, you know, I did so much for you and now I ask you for one little thing and you can't take care of me. Um, so that it could be taken uh, very personally with a lot of emotional history around it. That this is something kids should do. A kid ought to take care of their parents in this way. Um, so, so that is, is fraught with uh, problems. Others might be pretty understanding that you're working and, and this is um, uh, a problem, but they may feel obligated to pay the, the child back. Uh, they may not be able to accept that gift because they ought to be paying for it. It would not be right for them to allow their child or it's like oh no 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 I didn't want to cost I didn't want to cost you money here without the realization that this could be a bargain for the kid to be paying for for the uber so I'm sure you can think of of many more things that I haven't thought of that would be um, the dynamics I mean uh, the child themselves could feel tons of guilt. I can't do that. I can't do that to my parents. I got to let them know that I really think they're important. Uh, the parents actually could uh, be um, uh, using maybe a, a, a little strong, but but taking this opportunity to be with the child, right? Like. No, I, I'm, I'm totally capable of calling an Uber myself, paying for it, um, but really I want to be with you. And that may be the unspoken, one of the unspoken motivations. So it gets complicated. <laughs> and what's behind all of this are the emotions behind it. Um, and part of what could come up with this is if the child is like the only person in their life that they can call. In other words, there's not three or four kids that could do this. There's not neighbors that maybe would be willing to do this. Um, uh, there is one person in their life. Um, also, on another issue specifically with the Uber is the confusion around the app and for an older person uh, it, it could be confusing because obviously you do not call an Uber at least not in my experience you get on the app and click 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 and the Uber shows up so this can also add to the anxiety and frustration so you know all of these things are things that can be dealt with but they require exploration in other words a communication of feelings and some vulnerability and transparency around yeah mom uh, when you call here's what I'm faced with um, and here's how I would like to meet your needs because I do care and mom saying that the same thing that oh yeah I, I really want to be with you I really have the script that that it is the obligation of my children to do this. You know, just a real honest putting everything on the table that could resolve a situation like this to where now it can be done cleanly. Called up, can you do it? No, I can't do it. They could call somebody else or, you know what, I'm just going to call an Uber this time. Okay, thank you so much, honey. I really appreciate it. So, but when it comes down to you're it, you are the caregiver. You are the only person in this person's life. It even takes on additional juice, doesn't it? And maybe this, let's go over a little bit further, that this is a person that possibly um, does, can't afford 
uh, to pay for an Uber. You know, really needs that help. Uh, maybe they need help with their finances and with their checkbooks and, you know, a number of things. Uh, as one of my um, uh, acquaintances uh, recently said, she says, you know, I'm it for this particular person that isn't even um, uh, a, a relative of hers and I don't want to be it she has nobody else. I, and as much as a person who is it in somebody's life doesn't want to be it, I'm guessing a lot of us don't want to be in the position uh, when we really need that type of help, when we can't drive, when our cognitive or physical faculties are declining, and we've got to rely on other people and especially if that other person really comes down to one person. It is uh, a lot of responsibility to be it. So it really takes some um, awareness on the part of each person to uh, communicate here's what's going on for me, here's um, here's my limitations, here are my boundaries, here's what I need. And these are difficult conversations to have with people and so they're typically not had and people go on making up stories, being angry, feeling hurt, and everything that uh, goes with that. Um, you know, I was thinking about this that uh, the, the ideal thing is to pay someone to be it, right? Um, hopefully we've taken care of ourselves, we've prepared for our retirement so that we have some resources to support ourselves so uh, we can get the help that we need. I mean, basically my profession, I'm, I'm played paid to be it <laughs> by folks um, and and you know as as it in many of my clients life I don't do everything but I can arrange for services for a client like uber drivers to pick them up or help them figure out how to get groceries delivered uh, there's so much support and especially in the aftermath of the pandemic, you know, we've learned um, how to order groceries. We've learned that we can just go pick them up. We don't have to go in the store. We can have them delivered. We've relied on Amazon for shipments to our house. Um, being a senior today is so much easier than it was 10 or 20 years ago. But still, it, it's really knowing of these resources and having some resources to engage them or, or to, to pay for those. So, um, you know, I, I, just, I just think that the point is what, what emotional work do I have to do to, to construct in my retirement the support that, that I need. And as a caregiver, what do I need to do to take care of myself? And this, this whole topic is kind of like who pays for dinner? I think there is, is a whole book <laughs> that can be written on who pays for dinner. I mean, you talk about bringing money scripts to the surface, and um, money beliefs, that is fraud. And the same thing is with, well, can I ask, I mean, try this on. You're called, you're it, and you ask the person, you know, I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, can you uh, compensate? Can, you know, can you, can you give me $25 for the hour I'm going to be with you? OMG. That's probably going to set off some dynamite, especially uh, in, a, in a friend relationship or in a, uh, a family relationship. Like, oh, 
I can't, oh, that would be so rude. I can't ask for money. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a long uh, column that I also recently wrote on being paid as an executor. Uh, we have so many money scripts around, it would be rude. It would be unloving for me to ask for money. Likewise, take the senior that says, hey, uh, could you take me to the store? And I would be happy to pay you. In fact, I would rather pay you than an Uber driver because I would also love being with you. Now, talk about a win-win. You know, the, the, the person that gets compensated, maybe if they have to take off their job, they're, they're not losing to do this. Um, so that's a win for them. It's a win for the senior because they have the self-esteem of saying, hey, I, I am compensating them. This is a gift uh, that I'm giving them. This is a gift that they're receiving. Um, so don't take that away from me. Don't, don't take away a chance to give and I get the bonus of being in your company. Um, and, you know, when it's framed that way, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, this sounds really cool. Uh, let, let's adopt this. Um, and it is really cool, but it really needs some vulnerability in taking the, um, the initiative to have that difficult discussion. Uh, I'm even... Uh, uh, reminded recently, I asked my son to pick up something. He was coming over for dinner, and I asked him to pick up something. It was like four dollars, and he brought it. And thank you very much. What do I owe you? Nope, you don't owe me anything. I, I'm happy to do that. Well, you know, if this was a one-off, um, maybe I could accept that gift, but I couldn't accept the gift. And I said, no, I can't. I I cannot accept that. And here's why. If, if, if I don't compensate you for this, I am not going to ask you to pick up something from the store the next time you're coming over. I'm going to be reluctant to do that. So instead, I'm going to get into my car. I'm going to drive. I'm going to take the time. I'm going to pick it up because I don't want you to feel obligated to have to pay for this. Now, maybe if I was in a more uh, healthy, emotional place, I'd say, thank you, son. Appreciate it. Your decision. <laughs> you don't want to pay. That's great. Call him up again. Let him pay. Uh, you know, I don't know where his limit would be. You know, maybe I asked for $50 worth of groceries sometime. Um, but you can see how this he's setting himself up for uh, anger, uh, potential resentment, um, and, and uh, establishing unhealthy boundaries. So I insisted that I would pay. I told him why. I want to feel free to be able to ask you to go by the store. And I think I gave him $5 because there was some gas involved and there's some time involved. And I, quite frankly, I think giving him the extra buck uh, probably was a, a little bit uh, uh, cheap on my part because it cost him more in time and gas to, to do that. But nevertheless, we both were happy. We both understood that. And it's opened the way for us, for, for uh him to be able to pick it up and not have any anger or guilt that, oh, there goes four bucks because I can afford four bucks a lot more than he can afford four bucks. So just a, a small uh, example of, of the dynamics uh, involved here. So um, having those discussions is so important uh, when you are in that position when when you are it to set those boundaries and the sooner you do it the better uh, it's so much easier to do the first time you're called to say well here are the dynamics here's what's going on for me and that way you don't uh, have this thing happen so often and the resentment the anger the hurt whatever it is starts building so for uh, for seniors who are entering into this period of life, just beginning to need help like this, um, you might start thinking about how to put a paid support system uh, together. 
and I, you know, I guess it wouldn't have to all be paid. For example, for meals, there's uh, in our area there's Meals on Wheels, and there's uh, various uh, volunteer things and support uh, services that you don't necessarily need to pay for. But it's, um, I think it would be really freeing and very uh, healthy to figure out why you can, what do I need to put in place to live in my home, to stay in my home as long as possible? Uh, when when are I, will, will I need those? Uh, we have a, an assessment called uh, Journey into Elderhood that we will give folks that where they set a baseline on all sorts of functionality and things they need and to what degree they can provide for themselves and we like to give that every three years in fact I just took my first one uh, last weekend uh, to, to fill out um, my capabilities you rate it on a 1 to 10 I think of almost everything like I rated myself 8 to 10 and over the years, it's interesting to watch that, and it can be a real help to the senior as to, you know what, I do see my deterioration in this particular area. But back to the, to the being it and building support into our lifestyle. You know, this, this could uh, involve getting a bookkeeper and setting that up, setting that in place so that it doesn't get to the place that someday you kind of wake up and go, man, alive, uh, I can't do these books or these bills are more confusing and and then uh, relying on a child or somebody else or even worse, just letting the bills accumulate. Having that person in your life, even starting to provide some really minimal services in the in the beginning, you might say, I don't have much of a need for a bookkeeper. I can do that today. Well, just get one set up. Maybe they can come in and reconcile your checkbook once a quarter. You know, maybe it's something that's not going to cost more than, I don't know, $30 a quarter or something. Just to have them familiar. Just to have that service in place so that you can uh, increase, increase the use of it as your needs increase. Um, the same thing would go, for example, uh, we've talked about deliveries, uh, personal shopping. Uh, there's people that will do personal shopping. There's people that will do errands, run errands. Start using one. Just, okay, I'm I don't need it, but I'm going to do this just to see how it feels. You know, so many of us really uh, react with a lot of anxiety to a black hole. We don't know how to do it. We don't know how to download the Uber app. Well, download the Uber app. Have a grandchild help you download the Uber app. Run it. Order an Uber when you really don't need one. Just to have the experience because once we have that experience, the anxiety level really drops. I love to go back to the same place to vacation over and over and over because why? I have much less anxiety when I'm landing at Heathrow Airport in, in England. It's like I know the drill. I know where to go to get the, the tube. I know how to do that. You know, but the first time doing that, OMG. You know, that was way too, uh, it was very threatening and, and very anxiety producing. So in doing this type of stuff, just taking a little action in, in trying out these various services, trying out this the, the various support, maybe having a, a housekeeper, you know, start coming in once, even once a month, and you can increase them to once every two weeks. Get this network in place, and I think you will find your anxiety is going to decrease. Uh, when you call somebody and they're busy, because you really you just like to spend time with them, it's it's like no worries. I I can call Uber. I can do this. It, it's not a problem. I really just wanted to spend some time with you. We can be open. We can be honest with what our motivation is, and uh, uh, life is just. Uh, so much fuller and richer when uh, we're providing for ourselves, we're taking care of ourselves, we're clean in our relationships with other people, and we're clean with our relationship with money. So I hope this has been uh, helpful, especially if you find yourself as a senior or you find yourself as it. 
and I uh, look forward to any comments you have, please email me, and um, look forward to being with you next time. Take care.